Welcome back to Verdius Energy. Today I am installing a P-trap on this uh, AC unit. Uh, this is my home AC unit. Uh, it's brand new. Well, I just bought the condo too, so the condo is brand new to me. But this unit is only a year old. They just installed it before they, so they sold the unit. And for some reason they did not install a P-trap, which is uh, a big no-no because it makes a, a nice bubbling sound when the water gets when the air gets sucked up through the, the drain pipe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna install a P-trap. I'm also gonna install a P-trap that includes, here's the P-trap right here actually. Uh, this is from Easy Trap. This P-trap also includes a an overflow shutoff sensor. Uh, and what this will do is if the water gets backed up, if there's a clog anywhere in the P-trap, uh, and it starts overfilling, this will detect it early on and it'll shut off the AC before the floor floods. So what I've done is I've turned off the AC and then I'm going to turn off the water heater because it's right below it. I don't want any water touching that. The air conditioner and the inside evaporator unit. So here's our P-trap. For some reason they did not put in uh, any kind of PVC cement here. So I'm gonna dry fit it first, and then once I, once I make sure everything fits well, I'm going to put PVC cement in it. So this, uh, this just unscrews right here. And you're gonna have a little bit of water coming out there. What's gonna happen is this, it's gonna go right here. And then, uh, kind of hard to see, but uh, I'm going to reattach this existing PVC line right here. Uh, and I have to kind of have it offset a little bit because we're going to put this guy right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a little bit off of here so that uh, I have some more room. And then also so I can connect uh, so I have something to connect to this guy right here. So let me just do that real quick. So now I've cut uh, a little nipple right here and uh, this one's a little shorter now. So let's do a little dry fit. Just to screw this drain back on. All right, that's it. Now, pop this guy right here. It's just above the water heater. And then, looks like we might have to cut a little bit more off here. But this guy pops in right here. And then we have our overflow sensor right here. And then it comes with this, this brush right here that we can use to do a clean out, you know, because eventually these things do get dirty. So we can stick it in the top and uh, do a clean out if there's any gunk in there or if it's just clogged up. Yeah, we can do this right here. And then as you can see, the brush is in there. So we can clean it out if we need to. Okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to Shorten this up a little bit so I can fit it in here. Just finished sawing that off. And now, just pop this right here. And uh, there we go, there's our P-trap. You can see it drains all the way down there to the drain. So now what we gotta do is I just put this cable in. This is a 24 volt K 
cable and this will uh, tell the thermometer to turn off once the, uh, the overflow sensor is tripped. So it's a normally closed switch that is opened once the water fills up to a certain level. So now what I'm gonna do is take off the panel so I can wire it in to the thermostat. So I got this, this switch line uh, in here and I've opened up the front panel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, install the switch in between these two yellow wires. The yellow wire is the, um, the signal wire for the condenser to turn on and off. So by doing this, the, when the overflow switch is tripped, it'll turn off the condenser. So the fan will keep running um, and the, that way the whole AC won't shut off. Because if, if I wire it so that it disconnects the thermostat, the whole AC is gonna shut off and the thermostat's gonna show a blank screen because the power is off. So I don't want that to happen. I want it to uh, be easy to diagnose because if someone sees that the thermostat's off, they might just think their thermostat's broken or some other problem uh, has arisen. And I don't want that to happen. That actually happened to me recently. Uh, the last time the float switch at my old apartment uh, overfilled. So I'm going to take this off and uh, I'll just show you the finished product. I'm just gonna thread this trip wire, this uh, wire for the overflow sensor through this hole where the thermostat's already coming through. Got one of them. There we go. A little tight. Ah, oh, there we go. All right, so now we got that. We gotta strip these wires and put some wire nuts on the connections right here. So we got the, uh, we got it off. We got the wire nut off. We're just gonna nut these together. One thing to note is that it does not matter which way you do it because it's just a switch. Uh, it just allows current to flow or it stops the current. So it doesn't matter which way it goes. All right, so there we go. We got the two black wires connected to the two yellow wires right here. Let's put this cover back on and we'll see how it works. So we got the cover put back on. I just got to finish putting these screws back in. But as you can see down here, our condensate trap is beginning to fill up with water um, and it's still gonna bubble a little bit until it fills up enough. But uh, yeah, it's looking good. Uh, had a few problems with the cutoff switch. Uh, it turns out that the wires cannot just be wired however you want into the yellow circuit. You have to do it in a certain order. And unfortunately the wires aren't labeled, so I can't tell you that the black goes to the thermostat side and then the white goes to the air handler side or vice versa. Uh, you just have to try one and if that doesn't work, try the other. So the P-trap is almost filled up. Um, as you can see, there's a little bit of a difference between the water levels on either side. That's because of the static pressure difference. And it's pretty cool with this P-trap, you can, it's a clear pipe so you can see. And this basically tells us, uh, I'd say that's about a, uh, a half inch difference right there, which, which basically means we have a half inch static pressure differential uh, in the air handler, which is pretty, pretty cool to see um, and that's actually probably what this is rated for uh, I don't think it tells us up here but uh, that's good to know if we're doing any kind of calculations about airflow uh, and horsepower uh, we can uh, it's good to know what the static pressure is